we add our local plumbing merchants, and they've got a toilet that doesn't flush properly. So they've asked us to quickly sort this out. So it's quite a simple job, and we'll just walk you through how you can fix the fill and flush at your own toilet at home. It's a simple job. First thing, we isolate the water supply. So fortunately, we've got an isolation valve that works. If you don't have an isolation valve, you may have to drain the system down and if you don't feel comfortable, call your local plumber to come and help you out. This is simple, we turn it off there, 90 degrees across the pipe, isolate it. Next step is, we're going to flush the loop. This flush still works. Take the lid off, Some of, sometimes these are attached. This one just sits on the top, put this away, with, put this lid away where you can't damage it. If it falls, it will probably crack and maybe damage one of your tiles. Put that under there. Wait a minute. So I'm going to use a wet vac just to take the last bit of water out of the cistern. That's fine, you can also use a sponge or a towel or anything to dry that up. <coughs> so the next step is to take the cistern and get it off the wall. So on this one we've got two screws which we'll undo in a minute. And at the bottom there are wing nuts. Just undo them by hand. If you find that you can't do this, can't undo them and they're all rusted, I would recommend that you call in a plumber that's done this before. Make sure you put this aside because you may have to reuse them again. You don't need one of these, you can do it by hand, which is sometimes better. We'll use an impact with a long extension to get us in there. Because normally these are at an angle that makes it difficult. Coming out nice and easy for us on that side. All right, so this has been a lucky one. That's well. Okay, let's get out of there. Right, it's just time for this to come off. I've still got my flexi connected there, a set of adjustable spanners. I'm going to test it there first, get my setting right. Let me see if I can get in there. These should be hand tight, plus a quarter turn, so it shouldn't be too difficult to undo this flexi. And quite important, if you don't want to damage your toilet seat, make sure you put a, a towel over the toilet or a, um, a bit of cardboard like I've done. So you it. Alright, so full valve. Take that out. If you find the previous person used lots and lots of silicon, <laughs> you need to take a standy blade and cut that off first. You shouldn't be using silicon for any of these. That's what the rubbers are for. Fair water pump pliers to undo the flush valve. These are close coupling screws, so we just want to make sure everything is um, nice and ready 
you want to check these surfaces here that they're clean and not full of um, silicon or scale <coughs> before you put them back otherwise the rubbers won't seal I'm going to start by putting those back through their holes and we'll do the flush valve first so, so in this case we're using a Pro 55 UK fluid master flush valve dual flush with a button so let's see what's in the packet look that rubber mm. <coughs> right, this is an uh, inch and a half and two inch hole, so um, you've got this rubber that you can put in there if it's the bigger hole, and we've got the bigger hole. <coughs> rubber off and that goes in the bin don't need it anymore work this nice and home it won't do it by itself right and then make sure this goes into the hole in the system And I'm going to put it that way around to get away from so it doesn't fill interfere valve. with the fill valve. <coughs> so sometimes you may have a close coupling kit which will sit here if those screws need to go into that and that goes on first. So here's the question, how much do you need to tighten this? Tighten as much as you can by hand pair of grips to and that should be it sometimes on the inside you can see the rubber just starting to pop out a bit so my rubber is engaging all right so there's the flush <coughs> flush valve fitted and now we're going to do a full valve we're on mains pressure here on this job Always read the instructions. On this one we need to fit a little pressure reducer, which comes in the packet. So that just pushes in there. It's a little flow reducer. We need to see which way it goes in. regulator must be fully inserted and it goes that way up so that's the way it goes on the fluid master push it in and then our rubber that's going to be on the inside of the tank I see a lot of people put them on the outside that's not how it works with this one you can push it down and change your level Once you've got your level that you want it to be, put the lock nut back and then we're ready to go. <coughs> so lightly do this up and then we need to see if this is going to interfere with our flush valve. Have a look in that side, Tyron. That's all good. Okay, again hand tight and then a couple of turns just to make the rubber work. <coughs> this is called a donut washer. That's going to make the seal between the water that flushes down there into the pan. In this case it's going to go onto the pan. Some of them like the previous one we had, we're not going to reuse this one. That would You could push that over there. So it just depends on the type that you have. Right, so take it with two hands, line up the holes, let's 
keep this uh, back on. We've got a brass shank on this one, which makes it slightly better or harder to cross thread. So you need to be quite careful that you don't cross thread and don't tighten the thing up if it is cross threaded. Take it out <coughs> and start again. The hand tight in a few turns, that's all, all that it needs. And now we're going to put our wing nuts back. This is fairly simple. It will normally have a wing nut, a rubber washer, and then a, uh, the rubber stops the wing nut from cracking the china. So that's the way it goes. Get that on there. Hold this one down on the inside. That's my first side done. <coughs> Can I take my cardboard away? The second side. <coughs> can use to engage the washer, the donut washer, easier is by pushing this down a bit. Then doing it up, and pushing down on the other side and doing it up. <coughs> Again on the left side, that's all done. Now we're going to put our button in. Undo the existing button. <coughs> so I see a lot of people put these on top, <laughs> which is not the correct way. That's what you'll do if the hole is too small. Don't do it that way, unless that's the, uh, the look you want to go for. Terrible. So this comes off. That's oh, redundant, that's or you can tough. put it at the back. So that goes in, <coughs> and this cage goes over there. Don't do this up too tight because then the button gets distorted and it won't, it won't come out if you do it up too much. Button is working, all that remains is to pop it on there. You've got a little clip that engages it. Make sure this cable is not interfering with the fill valve. <clears throat> Let's open the water and see how it goes, if we've got any leaks. So we'll be flushing it at least three or four times to make sure that we don't have any leaks. So where are we looking for leaks? We're looking for a leak on this spindle here. It's quite often that, if it's not been used for a long time, you can have an issue leaking from there. That means you've got to drain the system down or isolate it and replace the whole bit. Second bit is there where we've put the flexible on. Third one is going to be our full valve connection onto the system. There's a leak there. And then we're going to flush the toilet. And if we've got water dripping from these screws, then we know our donut washer didn't engage. We'll just wait for that to fill up. <coughs> we want to check our level. So our level is pretty much right. We've got a I've got an overflow there, there's a bit of overflow starting to happen here, so we're going to pull this up about an inch or so above the water line, this internal overflow. Right. Good look all round. It's best to do this with a torch, and it's all nice and dry. We repeat the process three times, and then we're off to the next job. If you've got a toilet that's different, feel free to send me a picture to see what we can do, how we can help you out. Um, most toilets would work like this and these parts are readily available in your local plumbing, plumbing merchants. Thank you.